And please pray with me. Gracious God, I ask you to bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and our minds that your Son, Jesus Christ, would be glorified among us this day. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, of course, Peter wanted to stay up on top of that mountain. So would have you and I. Because after all, this is not just a mountaintop experience that Peter is having. This is the mountaintop experience. It's the original one. It's the one where all other mountaintop experiences get their name from. Oh, there are other mountaintop experiences listed and talked about in the Bible, and maybe you're familiar with some of them. Remember in Exodus 34, when Moses went up to the top of the mountain? You know, Exodus 34, I'm just looking at you. When Moses went to the top of the mountain, and there he got to be in the presence of the glory of God, and there he received the two tablets that the law were written upon, and, and he, was, he was in the presence of the glory of God, which was such a scary concept for so many people. And, and it was such an intense experience that Moses, Moses himself began to glow and to shine. And when he came down the mountain, the people asked him to put a veil on, asked him to put a veil over his face because, in the words of my generation, it freaked them out, right? That was one of the mountaintop experiences. Another one talks about the prophet Elijah. You remember Elijah, one of the, probably one of the two great figures of the Old Testament for Jewish people. Elijah was a prophet. He never, had a, he never wrote a book, but he had a lot of stories told about him. He was very mighty indeed. We heard one today about the chariots of fire coming down. And I know you were thinking, dun, 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 right? Yes, that's Elijah. Well, Elijah had a very difficult life. He was called by God to tell the truth. That's pretty hard. Especially when you have people like the evil King Ahab and Queen Jezebel who didn't like to hear that truth. And so he was pursued all over the place. And Elijah got to the point where he was just absolutely tired of running and he thought he was going to die, and he was ready to go. But at that moment is when God took Elijah up to the top of a mountaintop, and there he got to see God's power. He got to see the, feel the wind rushing and, and, and feel the earthquake, and then he heard the still, small voice of God. And that was all he needed for him to be able to continue his being a prophet and to go to the point where he was even able to pass along his mantle to the next prophet, Elisha. Well, those are two mountaintop experiences, but today in Mark chapter 9, we get to hear about the mountaintop experience. And how do we know it's the, the original one, the great one? Well, it's because Moses and Elijah were there to attest to it. They were there to, 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 to talk with Jesus. Not only that, we get to hear the voice of God coming from out of a cloud saying, this is my son, listen to him. So of course, Peter wanted to stay. And that's why he offers to make a festival out of it, the festival of tents or booths or, or tabernacles. Lord, should I build three of these dwelling places so that we can stay and be a part. Of he wanted to stay and be in that moment because for him, even though it was a terrifying experience, it was the mountaintop experience. It was kind of like being in the front row at a U2 concert or a Johnny Cash concert or whoever, right? Those are my two faves. It was like being on the 50-yard line at the Super Bowl. It was like getting into the VIP room behind the vel velvet belt, right? All, all, all combined into one. That was a mountaintop experience. This is the one that Peter had dreamed of. Have you ever had a mountaintop experience? 
For some people, they have it at camping, right? We're going to hear from Nate later on in announcements. He's coming from, from um, Flathead Bible Camp. I, I think about Pastor Larry. He's been a pastor for 37 years. So do the math. Is that 74 times he's taken junior high schoolers and high schoolers up to El Camino Pines to have a mountaintop experience? Some people just going to communion, knowing that the Lord has promised to be present in the elements of the bread and the wine, that that is a mountaintop experience. You know, I think you could also have a mountaintop experience that isn't necessarily a religious per se. Maybe it's a time where something that you've been working very hard for or worrying so deeply about, it, it, it came to pass and you, you, you experienced it and, and and it was a good thing. Or, or maybe it was a time where you didn't have to worry anymore. Uh, maybe you, you had your family all together and amazingly they were all getting along. Or, or who knows? Could be any a number of things. It's just one of those moments where you, it, just does, it feels like it just can't get any better. So I have a question about mountaintop experiences this morning, and here's my question. Why can't they last? Why are they such fleeting experiences? I sympathize with Peter. Why can't we stay in those moments? Why can't we build tents, right? I think we all know what the answer is. That's because of the valleys. Because life has valleys. We probably know what our own valleys are. For Moses, the valley was this big complicated group of people called Israel. He was called to, to be put in charge of them and they were nothing but trouble. For Elijah, it was the fact that he was called to tell the truth to a people that did not want to hear the truth. For Peter, I think for Peter it was this lack of confidence, or maybe it was just a, a, a struggle with doubt. He, he wasn't sure whether or not it was truly worth it to give his life to Jesus. You know, to identify yourself as a follower of Jesus. Well, that's a big sacrifice. That's what Jesus calls us to do. To give our lives. And, and, and I think Peter wrestled with that. So what is your valley experience? What, what is it that causes you anxiety? What, what is it that, that you would avoid doing even though... It's something that's inevitable. What is it that you struggle with? What is it that you worry about? What is it that causes pain? Those are valley experiences. And I think it's for these experiences that this story that we hear about today in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, that's why this story is such an incredibly beautiful story. Oh, I think it's... I think it's really amazing that, that, that Moses and Elijah show up. I mean, that's powerful stuff. And I think it's, it's really, I mean, mystical how, the, how the, the, the image of the cloud comes and then you hear that booming, or at least that's how I imagine it, this booming voice of God saying, this is my son, listen to him. I think it's even kind of neat to hear the way Mark describes it. I, I'm... I'm I, I, I love kind of, kind of getting into the mindset. It says, Mark says it this way, how, I love this description, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. Right? This is somebody 2,000 years ago trying to describe shining clothes that, that he couldn't just, he couldn't, he couldn't figure out, he couldn't have the words to explain it. I wonder how we would explain it. I don't think we would talk about bleach. Bleach. 